Hello. Hi. Can you hear us? Hopefully, yes. Welcome to sunny, the South London Kentish borders. The Provence, Joel. The, the Provence, Provence of England. <laughs> Here we are in, uh, in what couldn't be a more glorious day to be doing outside it's cocktails. Truly magnificent. Um, the sun is shining. You are in my garden, actually. Uh, here we go. Um, I've got my good friend over, Joel. We are going to be making you some, shaking up some summer cocktails today. Now, obviously, we're very lucky that we've just managed to get the weather. Um, we're very lucky, indeed, that we've managed to have people over to stay with us and come into our gardens, which is great. So what better than to start thinking about home entertainment again absolutely my, my name's joel harrison this is neil ridley we are contributors to the telegraph we are also authors of various books uh, particularly our last one which came out which is the world atlas of gin uh, today is actually world gin day there's the book so if you fancy uh, reading up more on gin and the wonderful world of botanicals and flavors and different gins from around the world uh, that's a great book for you but we've been doing uh writing about drinks for 12 13 12, years now 13 years so two too many to remember I too many that. to remember but what we love is introducing people to simple easy to make drinks that you can do at home particularly when the weather's like this and you can drink amazing things in your garden with your friends and we fingers crossed even more friends going forward absolutely so i think one of the things joe i mean if you were to pick a typical great outdoor drink what would you say it would be if it's something you wanted to make at home do you know if i'm making something at home neil it's got to meet a couple of criteria mm -hmm. it's got to be refreshing and ice is key for that so if you're at home now and you're thinking about your little ice drawer in your freezer just nip down the shops and buy bags of ice and use those uh the, use those throughout the summer because they're cheap they're fantastic and our opinion if you run out of ice you run out of party so make sure you've got lots of ice well the good thing is there's plenty of party going yes, on here. So. Excellent stuff. <laughs> so it has to be cold. It has to be refreshing. So I quite like herbaceous flavours, maybe sort of mint flavours or lemons and limes. Uh, and, wow. and it needs to be perfectly fruity and drinkable. So a little Absolutely. bit of sweetness in there too. How about you? I think I'd probably I'll go similar to that. I think for me, something which has a lot of length to it, again, which mm. is refreshing. The simplicity is the key. Now, I've been yes. getting into making a lot of home punches, actually. So things you can make in advance, mm. you can have them in the garden, you can take them off to a park or wherever you're going. Um, they don't necessarily need to have ice. This is the great thing. So as long as you keep mm. it cool, if it's in a flask or something like that, you can lengthen them with soda or uh, like one of the drinks we're doing today, you can lengthen it with sparkling wine as well for an additional delicious Absolutely celebratory kick. Absolutely fantastic. Neil, are we going to kick off with a drink? I think we should, yes. Excellent um, stuff. So this one, this is, are you going to make some, aren't you? But I will give a bit of background. Um, this one is a gin-based drink, being that it is World Gin Day today. Do you love gin, Neil? I love gin. I um, love gin too. We've got a cracking London dry ah. gin, one of our favourites here, number three. Let's have a look at this. So number three, number three London dry gin. First thing to know about this gin is it's called a London dry, and that means it's made with the botanicals in the still. So it's not post-flavoured, the botanicals are boiled up, uh, and, and the spirit is taken off and all the flavours of those delicious botanicals come with it. But this one is made by... Uh, Berry Brothers and Rudd, uh, the oldest wine spirits merchant in the world. I wow. So uh, down in St. James. Um, just I should mention, actually, as well, before we go on, um, there is a live chat bar uh, alongside, <gasps> which you it. will probably see there. Um, can we can about just see about it. see the questions. We will endeavour to get to these questions. And read some of your bits. There we go, I yes. I've got a cap on because it's so sunny out. But, uh, so yes, hello from sunny Burnham. That's not too far from where I live. I live in, in Windsor, so hello sunny Burnham. Um, so cool. Yeah, Great. we'll get round to your question. So if there's anything you can think of about su sunny drinks or anything mm. that you've tried that you want to tell the rest of the world about, then do get in touch. Absolutely. Anyway, this drink, so this is an English garden fizz. And right at the moment, we're in just about in the elderflower season. So if you, here we go. It's dropping everything um, over. The elderflower yeah. season, um, which means elderflower cordial. So elderflower, wonderfully floral, rich, light, works perfectly with gin, with a lovely floral, well-balanced citrus gin, but also with sparkling wine as well. So what we've decided to do is put together a drink that encompasses 
all of these things, John. Absolutely. Now, when you're making cocktails, you might think there's a bamboozling array of equipment out there. And there is, but you don't need to use all of it all of the time. So a cocktail shaker is a key ingredient for anything that you're going to make. But you can use something else that's sealed. So if you've got a kilner jar, you can use that as a cocktail shaker. Just make sure that the lid is sealed. So when you give it a good vigorous shake, everything stays in. Anything that really can screw down, maybe even a jam jar at times. But we're using a little cocktail shaker for this one and a measure. Now, measures are done often in this country. In America, they're done in ounces. Over here, they're done in mLs, milliliters. But really, parts is the key. So like, is it one part of alcohol to two parts uh, fruitiness or flipped round? So we're going to try and keep this as simple yeah. as we possibly so can. So this one, you've got 30 mil gin. This is a measure of, uh, of your London dry gin, so number three. Pretty much the top part if you've got other a jigger that looks side. like this. Yeah, yep. other side. That's 30 it. ml. Yeah, you do. That's 30. 35 that? in the middle. That's 50. Yeah. Uh, so one of those. Yep. Lovely stuff. Lovely. Stick that in there. Um, you've got 12, so basically half a measure of elderflower cordial. Now, this is some elderflower cordial that I have made, actually. This yeah, is it. really simple to make. It um, smells great. It's great, actually. Yeah. It's really, but it's so easy to make. And as I said, elderflower is really firmly in season at the moment. So what you want is take 10 or 12 heads, of it, really that lovely, fluffy, creamy-looking head when it, it comes out. Mm. Take all of those off. Take the stems out. You don't want any of the green bits. You just want that white floral note. Uh, you put basically 500 grams of sugar uh, with some water. Um, you want to make, make about a litre of this. Then you use the juice of one lemon and then the rind as well. So take off all that rind. You boil this up. Uh, and you strain it off into a bottle. It's really simple, super delicious. Though. Fantastic. And so, that's where the, some of the sweetness of this drink is going to come oh, from. Oh, yeah, pretty much all of it. Fantastic. Um, with that, you've got 12 millilitres, 12 ml, half measure again of fresh lemon juice, freshly squeezed lemon juice, and one dash of our secret ingredient, Ooh. some Angostura orange bitters. What do you do that for me, Neil? I will do one Excellent. Just small dash. It in. Do you know what, Joe? These go, are... Lovely. The, smells good. Come the apocalypse, people will still have bottles of Angostura bitters on their shelf. I actually ran out of Angostura bitters. Wow. I used a bottle up. That's amazing. Which is unheard of. Now I'm going to put ice in this. Yep. That's uh, to shake up our drink with ice, is to chill it and give it ever such a small amount of dilution. Uh, obviously, stick the top on the shaker. These have been sitting in the sun, so they're quite warm. So we want to give it a good, vigorous shake. There we go, there really get it going. Tell you what, you work off the calories that you drink. Sure. Shaking up the drink. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm going to choose my glassware next. For this, we're going to use a champagne flute. I'm going to take the top off the uh, shaker and I'm going to pour this in. So this is our lemony, elderflowery, sweetie, ginny goodness. Right, and to goes that, in the glass. We will add a splash, a generous splash of English sparkling wine from one, Ridge, from Ridgeview, one of my favourite uh, uh, sparkling wine producers in the UK. English sparkling wine growing in enormous popularity at the moment. Wonderful. Um, it was down there actually uh, last week. Uh, I was down visiting uh, nearby Chapel Down actually. Ooh, yeah, uh, very nice. Keep going, keep going. Hang Come on. on, hang on. Now, oh, what I'm going to do? Super fizzy. Though. I know, it's absolutely fantastic. If I just stick it there, and I'm going to pick up a bar spoon. And just give it a slight gentle mix. The bubbles will do most of the hard work for you. Um, that's why I've got Neil here to do most of the hard work for me too. Typical, so. yeah. <laughs> and uh, what we'll end up there with is a kind of twist on a sort of French 75 style drink. Um, oh, and before, we need a small garnish of fresh mint. Fresh mint. Delicious. You gave that a slap. Why did, did you give it a slap? What that does, that just opens up the, the pores on the mint. It just gives it a bit of freshness. That mint yeah. will start coming through. Oh, yeah, so. and you get the immediate hit of it yeah. as, as, you, as you put it in the glass. Well, that, sir, what do we think? Absolutely. Two chairs back there. I might just retire. So that's it. You're on Sit down. Right put, my seat, put my feet up. Welcome it to Solo Show. There <laughs> we do go. the rest of it. No, um, that really is an absolutely fantastic, so just to recap, super easy, yeah, super really delicious easy. drink. Um, so really it's simple to make uh, English Garden Fizz, 30 millilitres of uh, London Dry Gin. You can use number three or anything you have. Uh, you have 12 mils, basically a half measure of elderflower cordial. You can buy one or you can try and make your own. Uh, 12 millilitres of freshly squeezed lemon juice, a dash of orange bitters. That's optional, but it does add that little bit of pizzazz. Shake that up over ice 
and then simply top up with an English sparkling wine Very and a good. sprig of mint. Lovely stuff. That's absolutely delicious. Good. Now, you'll notice uh, across all the cocktails that we do today that there's a mix of um, citrusy notes, there's a mix of fruity notes, but there's also sweetness. Sweetness is really key in cocktails because it balances out the acidity of any of the, of the uh, citrus fruits we might be using, uh, boosts any fruity flavours we might have, and also creates a balance to the alcohol that we've got in there. So, Neil, are you going to bring the rest of the cocktail ingredients over for the next cocktail. I shall. Do you want to have I'm a going to wander questions? around and yeah. see if there's any questions from anybody. Hello. Um, so good morning from Vancouver, Canada. Wow. Well, that's Ooh. a pretty early time to be drinking, but I mean, maybe make some notes and try one of these this afternoon. I hope you've got the weather that we've got here. Well, it's absolutely boiling, which is great. Um, uh, you use, uh, Andrew says he uses Chapel Down Bacchus. And actually I nearly brought ah, the Chapel Down Bacchus with me. Um, which is, you know, equally as good to use. Super, and it's really delicious. Jackie isn't it? says, "Happy G and T's from Colsterworth." I've no idea where Colsterworth is. Can you let us know, Jackie? Sounds like a lovely place, and I hope you've got the same weather that we have today. Good. So the next cocktail we're going to do is one of my personal favourites, and Neil and I had a bit of a battle about this one because we were only going to do three cocktails, but we insisted on doing four because this middle section is about the wonder that is tequila. Now, doors are for slamming. Tequila is not. Tequila is for drinking and enjoying, and the herbaceous notes that you find in tequila go brilliantly in a variety of different drinks. But probably the most famous is the margarita. I love a margarita. It's one of my absolute all-time favorite drinks, especially when the sun is shining. One that I'll drink all around the world, and I've had some in some incredible places. But it's a difficult drink to get right. Why? Because it's sometimes made over sweet and it's sometimes made with way too much citrus in it. So I'm going to show you how to make one with a bit of a twist. I'm going to use coriander and I'm going to use chili. Now, my ears pricked up when you said this because I like savoury drinks. Yes. Uh, I like herbaceous flavours. I'm not, I have to lay claim to this, I'm not a huge fan of the margarita. No. So I am here to be impressed the uh, margarita by, by your, your spicy creation drink. here. So, so what I'm, goes into this? So I'm going to start basically with, with a, a large measure, a two-part measure of tequila. So I'm going to use the 50 ml top of Blanco tequila. Now, be careful when you're buying your tequila. Some tequila that looks silver is, uh, is made of uh, a mix of spirit and agave di distillate. What you want is 100% Blanco tequila. So that's made from 100% agave. So I'm going to use a big measure. That's the top part. And that's going to go into my cocktail shaker. Lovely. Put that back. This one's called Maestro Dobel. It's a sort of premium high-end tequila, uh, but still comes in at a decent price for mixing. So uh, have a look out for that in the shops. Then I'm going to put in a couple of pieces of pre-chopped red chili. Now, I've got to be very careful with my hands here because I did this <laughs> pre-chopped earlier, made the mistake of going to rub my eye. Not a very yeah. nice experience at all. Um, I'm also going to add in some coriander. So I've just got some coriander that I bought from the shop earlier. I'm going to do what Neil did, give it a good back, wash, whack to release the flavours. And I'm putting that in with the, the coriander is almost like the marmite of of, uh, of herbs, isn't it? Some people it love it, some people can't stand it. Yeah. And then I'm going to use this. This is a muddler. You may have one of these at home. If you don't, you can use the end of a end of a spoon or the end of a uh, uh, rolling pin. And I'm just going to bash it about to release the flavours. It's called muddling a drink. And the point of this is to squeeze out the flavours. I'm squeezing out the, the sort of heat of the chilli and those fresh notes that we get in the coriander. Could you use other stars of chilli? Because that red one, you that, can. is that particularly yeah. hot? Or? It is particularly hot and I like mine. In fact, if I'm making this at home, um, I might just forego the coriander and the chilli and just put in a dash of Tabasco. Okay. Just really kind of make it super simple. But I love the addition of heat that you get when you make a drink, that, drink with lime mm. like this. Nice. So I've bashed that about a bit. The next thing I'm going to put in is a measure of Cointreau. Cointreau is a triple sec, so it's an orange liqueur. Um, I'm putting in 25 ml, so half the amount that I put in of tequila. This brings both sweetness and a fruity orangey note to the drink. Uh, so that's Cointreau tequila. You can use another one like Grand Marnier, for example, or there are other triple secs available. So that's gone in. But we need some sweetness, and ah. that sweetness is coming from agave syrup. Now, 
I've foregone most sugars and sugar syrups in my cocktails in favour of agave syrup. It's supposedly healthier. Isn't it? It's is it, is it a low GI. Yeah. yeah, something like that. I don't know, but it's it's, it's more natural. Uh, it's better for you than, than than sugars. I actually think it tastes a bit richer as well. I I've used runny honey before. Yeah. It's very it difficult to use runny honey in cocktails because when you add ice into that drink, suddenly it becomes very claggy. It's very difficult to mix. So you've got to really work it before. Absolutely. But it, agave syrup or agave nectar which means it is completely different isn't it it's very it viscous is. it's very viscous it's it's like you say it gives a bit of a uh, bit of a better body and mouthfeel mm. but it's also a little bit sweeter so you only need to be sort of you only need to use a, a gentle a tiny dash here. now i'm just going to put a tiny dash you could measure it out but i mean it's not really worth it you can just put in a couple of squeezes like that okay. and then the next thing neil is some ice so if you could uh, if you could load me up with some ice sir, that would be great that'll be any more no that's fine Enough to fill the shaker. So we've got in here two measures of tequila, one measure of Cointreau. Uh, we've got uh, some coriander, some chili. Uh, oh, my lime juice, which is the next thing Ooh, I need. Oh, yes. Don't forget uh, the lime juice. And um, some fresh lime. So it's one measure of fresh lime. So one measure of Cointreau triple sec, one measure of fresh lime, uh, one measure of two measures of tequila. That's oh, yeah. Going so in. that would taste. Uh, that would taste very strange. That lovely I'm citrus. An extra meat. splash in just for a bit of fun because I do love a little bit of lime. And then. We're going to give it a good, vigorous shake. Now, I'm not sure this is a, a regulation shake. <laughs> well, I thought it was pretty good, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. We've got, we've got some movement there. Again, we've got to work off the, the calories yeah, of the drink. Get the guns out. Yeah. <laughs> we've got to get the show. Now, to, now uh, margaritas, you can serve in a number of ways. You can serve it in a tumbler over ice. That's one way I like to drink it. And as the ice melts, the drink dilutes. Very delicious. Um, you can serve it in a coupe, which is what I'm going to do. And you can rim it with salt. I don't like rimming it with salt. I just don't get it, really. Not for me. So here we go. Uh, using a strainer, because we've got bits in our drink, I'm just going to strain it into the coupe. Lovely lemony, tequila -y, hot chili and mild coriander goodness oh, we'll see. Oh, that looks pretty good and Coming is there a garnish out. with that as well or just straight straight up? <sighs> do you know what no. you could garnish with a a little bit of the chili but it's this particular chili is a bit hot i might use a, a red chili at times a uh, green chili at times you can garnish with a little bit of lime but i'm just going to serve this now, straight up let's see um hang on let me test it hang on mm. oh yeah all right Beautiful. You've got that lovely good? heat on the back, got that lime up front, and that little bit of sweetness well, to bridge the two. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of the margarita, so I am going to be doing something different. And we've got a little bit of a competitive element here, actually. Mm. So um, I'm going to introduce someone to you when I've made my drink, and we're going to see which drink they prefer. Now, do you want to set your <coughs> drink up? Which yes, is your tequila-based yeah, drink. Let's I'm going to you check questions. some questions. Yeah, good. So, hello. Oh, popping in. Uh, so apparently, Colster Work is on the Lincolnshire Rutland border. I drove through uh, the Lincolnshire Rutland border the other day. Rutland, of course, still the smallest county or constituency in the UK. I mean, Rutland Water is absolutely beautiful, beautiful isn't it? Yeah. Not too far from where you're from originally, really. It is. is. It's right in Leicestershire. Uh, the gin cocktail is amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. Um, now, Okay, let's have a look at what you're going to make. So, I, as I said before, I, I prefer lovely, long, simple drinks, especially with tequila. Uh, for me, when you have a great silver tequila, you want that peppery note, you want that lovely herbaceous note to come through. But I actually prefer, sometimes I find that a little bit too overpowering in a drink like a margarita. The Paloma is Ooh. my, if you want one drink out of me that I will tell you is this season or this summer's drink you must try, it's the Paloma because it's dead simple. It's silver tequila, again, mm -hmm. white tequila, um, really, really straightforward, a little bit of lime juice. Uh, it's all about refreshment, citrus, all of these things working together. And what we're going to do is we're going to make one using basically three or four parts. This is a little twist that I've developed on it. Um, you lengthen the drink with a soda. So usually you could use a pink yeah. grapefruit soda. There's a great one by a company called Three Cents, uh, which you can go and check out. I actually prefer using this blood orange soda. Actually. Okay. I think that really works well. You've got a lot of dark citrus notes in. So we're going to lengthen it with that. But we're going to make this in our glass. 
So, so this is a built, it's a built drink, drink in the glass. Yeah. So built drinks are ones that you make in the glass, it, like you would with a gin and tonic, for example. It doesn't require Absolutely. any shaking. It's pretty simple to do in front of you, and and you know, it's good theatre at a table. I Absolutely. Find a built so drink. we're going to put uh, twenty. We'll put thirty ml of our silver tequila. Great into stuff. There. That and sounds like a decent measure. That's a good. gentleman's pour there. Lovely um, stuff. And to that, we're going to add fifteen ml of fresh lime so we've pre-squeezed yes. our, our citrus juices for today because cutting a citrus on camera and then squeezing it out can be quite a laborious affair well, you don't need to us to tell you how to cut and squeeze a, a piece of lime or speaking of which the most useful piece of bartending equipment i can wholeheartedly recommend is the mexican elbow the mm. most easy way to um, to squeeze your, your citruses. So into that, we've got our tequila. We've got 30 ml of that. We've got 15 ml of fresh lime. We're going to add two to three dashes. I don't know if you can see this. Actually. I'll Go bring on. this round. Bring it round. Of some cucumber bitters. Ooh. Ooh. Really, really delicious. Uh, so what are that? So, so cucumber bitters are effectively like a high strength concentration of the flavour. Yeah. So you Stick get a bit on the back of my sort of I'm Almost that sort of. What was a watermelony note of I mean, it? Very intense, sort of. Uh, oh wow! Lovely, isn't it? Oh goodness me! So Where did you get those? Where these did you buy those? Uh, the company bought called the Bitter Truth. Okay. I think you can get them from. Uh, Stick that into Google. Whiskey Other search exchange engines are available. These, uh, these Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Ask Stick Jeeves. it onto Yahoo. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks for really throwing me there. Right, um, to that, those three dashes of our cucumber bitters, we're going to add a small amount of our agave syrup. You don't need a lot because the soda is very sweet. We're just going to add probably just a little dash in there, actually, just to uh, give it a bit extra. of additional sweetness. Um, I'm going to give that a stir mm. uh, just to get everything going. Everything's starting to get mixed up. Um, I'm just going to sip on my absolutely phenomenal award-winning margarita over here now, just as you do that. Um, so we've done that, and then I'm going to add our San Pellegrino blood orange soda. I love so these San Pellegrino range. They're really, really tasty. The blood orange is great. There's a lemon and lemony one that's really good. There's a, uh, a, a range of different flavors. I find them really robust, really fruity. And they work with a variety of different uh, spirits, but particularly well in this Paloma with a with a tequila. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh, wow. This is a good drink, this. Yeah, that's one for a, a sunny Saturday afternoon. It is. Somewhere, Very apt. Somewhere in the Kentish South London borders. Um, and as a garnish, mm -hmm. so I'm going to add a small sliver of... Oh, careful of them fingers. Ooh, yes, pink grapefruit. Here we go. Very nice. So, if you can see that, Ooh. a lovely smile, sunny, smile, a smile of, of grapefruit. Grapefruit, fantastic. That is a big piece. There we go. That is a big piece. Right, that is delicious. Now you're not going to try this because I'm going to introduce what? someone who is going to give us some arbitration here, some independent. Independent on this, yes. Um, I I'm going call to introduce, foul, sir. Independent. I'm, I'm going to introduce uh, Mrs. Ridley, my wife. Would you like to come in um, and Round try the these? Watch that cable there. Very good. Um, now, I know you are a tequila fan, yes. Mrs. Ridley. Um, we have come up with a conundrum here. Joel likes his margaritas. I'm not a fan. I like the Paloma. There is only one way to decide this. I think that's with you having the overall final that's, steward's that's decision. That's an awful job. It's a terrible job. Awful. Terrible. Somebody's got to do it, and it's fallen on your yeah. your shoulders, Karen. So, so which you okay. can try which No, you try like that one first, because this is spicy, so it's uh, it's going to mm -hmm. have a lingering heat to it. It's also just better. So, you yeah, know, yeah, I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's it's only fair that yours is tried first, I think. Oh, yeah. Tasty? That's nice. Yeah. Citrusy. There it's good. Go. Mm. It's a good drink. <laughs> Refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that a cocktail should be, especially in this heat. Here you go. Seeing what's going this on. It's a here. big drink, powerful drink, complex drink. Spicy, fruity, sweet. Stop overselling it, man. <laughs> what do we think? It's spicy. It is spicy. Probably wouldn't turn either of them away, to be honest. Oh, well, there you go. Look, you, you have to choose one. <laughs> it's a penalty shootout, like the Euros. I could probably have one of these. Yeah. I could have a few of those. Yeah. Conclusive <laughs> 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 Oh, 
<laughs> well, my bar's closing down because yeah. it's only someone drink. Are. Your bar's staying open. Can I take I'm opening me, multiple outlets now. Yes. <laughs> but I might win awards for my drink. So, um, thank yeah. you very much, Mrs. Ridley. You can, can take, take, it? take take them take away. Both. Yeah, take both. Yeah, there you go. Oh, thank you. Set your chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, very good. So classic drink, the Paloma. I mean, it's it, it, is, it is really for, for this sort of weather. Yeah. It's wonderful. Again, classic drink, the, the the margarita. Two very different variations on a terrific spirit. Actually, and I think I yeah. wholeheartedly recommend exploring uh, silver tequila with this sort of thing in mind because you're going to get so much spice, pepperiness herbaceousness but it's just a really great drink to make i think for me that's the, that's the key with tequila is so many people have bad experiences with a variety of different spirits in their youth maybe mm. when they're growing up and tequila is one of those that that does linger with a lot of people but i would encourage you if you've ever had a bad experience with tequila and you feel it's something that you can't drink go back and try it you were probably drinking probably quite poor quality tequila in an environment that wasn't conducive to, to, to finding the flavors of it but tequila has this wonderful earthy herbaceous note that particularly when balanced out with the light or the, the, the blood orange that in these two drinks just works really well to underpin those flavors and give you a complex interesting drink. actually and as well I think if you're interested in things like the old-fashioned a little bit more complex in mm. flavor you can start to look at things like aged uh, and yayo tequila yeah. uh, which means it's been aged for uh, several years in oak cask it takes on that lovely sweetness and richness mm. that an American whiskey would or um, a scotch or something like that and actually you can use these really well in place of a scotch or an american whiskey um i really love um a, a good anio tequila in an old-fashioned absolutely you get that herbaceous note you get yeah. a honey note as well yeah delicious would you drink an old-fashioned in weather like this or is that a drink for you that is more of a kind of leather armchair fireside winter style drink i think there's various ways you can explore this and it's the same with the negroni actually now i'm oh. sure there's going to be plenty of people out there who enjoy a negroni on a hot summer's day um it's quite a short drink and it is quite complex in flavour. There's big, powerful notes in it. What I find that I like to do, actually, and I started doing this a bit more, is I've started lengthening. Oh, yeah. Mm. So if you take a Negroni, for instance, um, you've got three parts, uh, gin, uh, Campari and sweet vermouth. Very easy to make in a glass and, and build and so forth with a slice of orange. Um, actually, because it's quite powerful yeah. on the on the on the palate, it's sometimes nice to either just lengthen that very slightly with a bit of soda water, make a tall mm. glass, a yeah, tumbler style, a highball, or as as I said before, if you've got a, a wine glass, build yourself a spritz so you can make that. Uh, add some uh, a little bit of soda water, a bit of sparkling wine as well. It's that kind of aperol spritz sort of vibe. Yeah, there's that there's that quintessential drink which uh, some of our our viewers today may have come across called the Milano Torino, which is a classic Italian drink which is a mix of vermouth and Campari. Campari coming from Milan and red vermouth coming from Torino, so Milano Torino. That was deemed a little bit too strong for some of the visitors to to uh, to Italy, and it was lengthened with soda water to what we know as an americano. Why? Yeah. Because it was drunk by the American and visitors uh, one of my friends likes to make a drink uh like that but swapping out the the sweet red vermouth mm -hmm. for a rose vermouth and what nice. you end up with is this lovely long lengthened drink with a little bit more of a, a, a laconic twist to it and perfect nice, at the nice. back of the garden on a on a sunny summer's afternoon rose mm. I mean, yeah, the weather's just, that's what you want Absolutely isn't it so right. um i'm gonna see if there's any questions yes Anything coming up on the uh, chat? My drinks, Andrew says, are stacking up here. Well, they are here too. Well, they were. They were. <laughs> We've been, been raided for our stock, which is no bad thing. Uh, loving stuff. the sound of bird song in the background. Wow, there's a little train yeah, passing by. Every interesting enough, we actually, we're on we're on Channel Four Sunday brunch tomorrow um, at uh, just before twelve, and I'm debating whether or not I could get away with doing it from from my garden. So uh, <laughs> we shall see if the internet connection works okay. <laughs> Andrew says he may have overdone the chili. So, Andrew, it depends on how strong your chilies are. He's asked how much should be added into that margarita. Good question, actually. Good yeah. question. So um, I did try my chili beforehand. In fact, what I would normally do is I have a, an agave syrup at home. I bought a second agave syrup in which I macerate chili and coriander. And you just leave it in the fridge. And then when you use that, boom, you've got yes. your flavours and balance in there already. Or just a dash of Tabasco. And that way you take the chili out and just adding a dash of tobacco and you can make it to taste them because i think yeah. that's the one thing about using any sort of fresh ingredient could be a lime or, or coriander or indeed actually chili yeah you just don't quite know how hot that's going to be exactly and if and you it, watch if you go to a bar and you watch kind of 
uh, genuine high-end bartenders making drinks. Uh, all the way through, they'll be taking a little bit of it, putting it on the back of their, their hand, tasting it for balance mm. and flavour. Of course, we've made these drinks so many times, they're perfectly balanced and perfectly flavoured. Well, I'm not <laughs> sure Mrs Ridley would agree with you there, my friend. Uh, we shall see. Um, I think we should move on. And yes. we're going to, as we've been moving through our day, so imagine we started off with our wonderful English garden fizz. That's a lovely aperitif. It's a lovely, lovely way to welcome your guests as they arrive, very simple to make. Um, you could then offer them a choice of uh, are the spicy the margarita. Delicious spicy oh, margarita. Say, the delicious <laughs> spicy margarita, or Neil's perfect mar uh, Paloma. Um, lovely to get the conversation started at the party. Now, as the evening goes through and you're suddenly getting into the sun's coming down fortunately the sun is just starting just to come down thankfully now, so yeah. maybe i can take my hat Not off blazing as it, it was yeah. before um you may want something a little bit more complex and this could take you through into the early evening uh works great with food yep. and what i've decided to do here joel is mm. we're going to use everyone's party favorite oh. which is rum oh now, love a rum rum in the light form, you can make some wonderful uh, daiquiris or you can make mojitos, anything like this. Wonderful, refreshing drinks. Of course, as you move through into golden rum and then dark rum, you get all these wonderful complex flavours and aromas coming through mm. as well. You can use rum much in the same way you can as a dark uh, American whiskey or, sorry, a, an Añejo tequila. You can put that into an old fashioned. Nice or um, a Martinez in, uh, in place of gin. What we're going to be doing today is called an El Presidente. Ooh. And this is an interesting drink because this is, it's not really on many people's radars, the El Presidente. If you were to think of the Manhattan, the classic American Manhattan, which uses American whiskey, mm -hmm. it could be bourbon or rye, it combines sweet vermouth and dry vermouth and bitters. I mean, this is a historical classic, uh, still going strong today. Um, the El Presidente is very similar to the Manhattan, actually, and uses pretty much the same ingredients. A couple of other little twists in there, but this is one, if you're that kind of style drink fan, then you really want to start exploring this because it's wonderful and it will take you into the complex uh, evening as it starts to arrive. So, do you want to grab your bits? Yes, I will. Oh, I, beg you oh, I mean, um, your cocktail bits, of course. Um, <laughs> that turned into Morecambe and Wise now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, rum is a fantastic product. Rum is made from a, a molasses sugar base, uh, one of those fantastic distillates that kind of has uh, resonated across the world and across generations. And there are many, many different drinks that, that use rum from the dark and stormy, really simple mix with ginger ale, through to uh, a drink like the El Presidente, which is much more com complex and complex complicated in both uh, uh, construction and in flavour. But rum can bring a real different element to any drink because it brings a sweetness, a natural sweetness to it, but it also brings flavours of oak casks and that lovely kind of rummy note of sort of raisin and biscuit. That comes oh, absolutely. Through. Now, what we're going to be using today is an aged rum. Um, this is a rum by a company called Mercer & Co. Now, if you're... Lovely bottle. It's really beautiful. nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, if you are familiar with the Heyman's uh, Gin brand ah, yes. uh, of of, of, of note, one Made of London's London. finest. Yeah, this is actually one of their, it's their first bottling of a rum, actually. Wow. Um, I really like this because it's got lovely savoury note as well. It's got a sweetness. It's got a kind of almost toasted, slightly sherried note as well alongside the sweetness. It really works well in this. It's not too overbearing. It's got that right, the right side of freshness okay. and then an oak aging as well. So right. what we're going to do is we're going to stir this drink. This is different from shaking. With stirring the drink, you're looking, rather than shocking it and chilling it, you're looking at diluting it. So we're going to stir this down very slowly using... A mixing glass. If you don't have one of these, no problem at all. You can use a kilner jar or anything. If you've got something with straight sides, that's what you're really looking for there. Um, with this drink, we're going to add 50 ml, so at the uh, big side of our shaker, of our dark rum. Fantastic. I love rum. Uh, I'm really, it's become a big staple in my, my uh, drinks cabinet at home rum. Over the last three or four years, we've seen some incredible new rum brands mm. on the market. Really drawing on rums from around the world to blend together all these different flavours of complexity. Absolutely. Now, to that, we are going to add a single measure of 25 ml of dry vermouth. So dry, herbaceous, wonderful uh, dole in here. If you have a martini, you're probably very familiar with this style of martini. So there are two types of vermouth, aren't there? There's yep. white vermouth, which is, is drier in, in flavour. It's mm -hmm. almost got that sort of like a fino sherry type flavour to it. 
Absolutely. And that's what you're using here. Yeah. But then there's also the other type, which is, which is sweet, is yeah. sweet, which tends to be red in colour, right? Well, yeah. And mm. what we're using for that is this is the absolute don of, in my opinion, <laughs> the absolute don of all sweet uh, vermouth. I'm going to come around and show you. Do it. Um, <clears throat> just in case you're not familiar with it. So this is Antica formula. Oh. Um, it's a wonderful, rich uh, Italian red vermouth. Very spicy, very chocolatey. Um, also works very well as a digestif in its own. It is, ice, yeah. Right? It's, it's great it? over yeah. ice. Um, really nice. You don't need a huge amount of this because it's so rich. And actually, um, I'm only going to add 15 uh, ml. So basically a half a measure of this. Um, it's so, I wish you could see the colour of this, actually. It's it really so rich, is, isn't it? Dark. It's rich. got that sort of cola colour to it, yeah. which is, you know. It's my smell, that's wonderful. Yeah, sort of almost like a, a deep, rich red wine with spices added to it. Yeah, exactly that's what, essentially what it is, what a, yeah. a great vermouth is. Um, to that, we're going to add some triple sec. So rather yeah. like our Cointreau that Joel used earlier, um, this is an orange liqueur. Mm -hmm. We're just going to add just a little dash of that, 10 ml. Right. Tiny little bit of that, two bar spoons worth actually. And I guess that's some of where your sweetness is coming from as well, because yeah. the liqueur means that it's sugary. Well, interesting. In with, with a Manhattan, you'd be using a bitters in this. Now you don't really need to because you're bringing out this wonderful orange, slightly bitter orange note, but then with that sweetness as well, sure. melding with that dry vermouth. Um, we're going to add another unusual ingredient, and it's not essential. This actually, this is grenadine. Mm. Um, it just gives it a bit of colour, a little little bit of. Uh, uh, a tiny, fruity tiny flavor, fruity note to it as well. See, so you literally just drop yeah, in just a tiny bit, really, a few dashes. Yeah, nice. and then we're going to add our ice. Which is this is good because rapidly shaking, melting. you know. So shaking stuff can always be a bit of a labour. Sure. Well, you've done all the work today. On no, that's true so, uh, on that one. Yeah, I've earned my drink later. You have. Uh, uh, but the stirring down, as you say, the point of this is to chill and dilute. Yes. At the same time. And I think actually, when you look at these classics mm. as well, um, some of our the, the classics we've been talking about, the Martinez, the Martini, uh, the uh, Manhattan, these are really very refined drinks. So if I go into a bar and I see someone slowly majestically mm. stirring a drink like this there's also the sound there's something oh, wonderful about the sound stop chatting there mm. yeah that's the sound hey. of a high-end cocktail bar that's put everyone right in there. the mood hasn't it and yes. look, there's, there's no birds singing they're all paying attention <laughs> they're all watching <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we're going to stir that for about 20 seconds really you don't want to and the ice is a little bit diluted anyway um try and remove as much water from your ice as you can is there a problem of over dilution if you just yeah keep stirring and i think and if the you, ice melts if you were going too quickly what you'd end up with is is a very diluted drink okay so we're gonna do the glass thank you very much so you're using a coupe as I well am. A coupe again. Mm -hmm. um good little tip for you if you are making these uh in advance as well what i would recommend you doing is putting your glasses in the freezer um that will give you that wonderful frosted note and you yep. can take those out pour your wonderful drink on top oh, the luxury uh, of having a freezer just for glasses that's yes. a life goal imagine thing. that hashtag eh? life goals look at the height there Ooh, eh? that looks good yeah so this oh. is you would say this is more of an a sun downer yeah and well, which is appropriate because the sun the is, sun has just gone in slowly it? beginning to put its hat on yeah uh hooray i'm just wow. aerating that as well that looks good so to mm. that we're going to add a thin sliver of orange peel one of your fruit and veg for the day for this count i in my book yes yeah, um, i'm not sense. sure there's any health claims you could have um <laughs> you can leave it like this or what you can do is just tidy it up so all i'm going to do is just take off those rough edges and you've just taken the peel there. yes you, what you want is just the peel right. um actually if you can see there's um there's not too much i don't know if you can see that very clearly but um you don't want too much of the white too much of the pith if you can leave that behind because that brings uh and introduce a bit of bitterness to the drink but yeah you can just tidy that up nice. make it look and you want the track you want the the um peel because that's where the all the, the zest all the yeah. zest and the oils all those oils kept. and what we're going to do is you just take it between your fingers like so and we're just going to express oh. that over the top now i wish we had a second camera oh, over nice the top here because what you get to see is the way that the oils sit on top of the drink and create almost this like, like oil slick on top of, ah, yeah. of flavor and aroma and when you smell that ah straight away you've got look at him diving in i know wait another drink yeah come on um you get that wonderful uh aromatic note of the orange but then 
the rum, that's definitely there. You've got that sweet aromatic note from the uh, Antica. The dry vermouth is in there. Mm -hmm. And how does it taste? Outstanding. Let's have a go. So what mm. should I be looking for flavor-wise? So flavor-wise, it's complex. It's a, mm. it's a big drink. Um, actually, there's a lot of fruit in there as well um, with that grenadine, actually. Mm. Uh, it just introduces that little bit of fruitiness to it, doesn't it, as well? That's really lovely. And it's actually not as deep and rich as, uh, say, a Manhattan. Mm. So it is much more of a summer-based version. I think that, I that think grenadine so, yeah. really adds that little fruity note to it. Yeah, That's nice, a really, really delicious drink. Good. Um, shall we see if we've got any, any uh, questions? questions? We I'm going to wander up. His question I think we haven't thing. got too much longer to talk, actually. I think maybe so, only five minutes. So What? Uh, let's have a look. So let's have a look. Um, do you think aquaf <clears throat> Aquafan, or Aquafab, I guess, works as well as egg white in a whiskey ah, sour? That's Cynthia is asking. Very, us. Cynthia, Cynthia, very good question. question. I prefer using egg white because I think actually it does emulsify, works better. But actually, I think for, for purposes, if you're making a drink for someone who uh, perhaps wouldn't want egg in if they're vegan or if they're in dairy intolerant or whatever, yeah. um, it is good. I yeah. think it works. You have to work it a bit harder in the shaker. Um, yeah. With an egg white, of course, it fluffs up very quickly if you're dry shaking that. Uh, but it is, it's a good product though. So good question here. What's the mixture for the Negroni? So really simple. It's just three parts. Uh, one part red vermouth, that's the sweet vermouth. One part Campari, which is bitters, and one part gin. Stir it down, uh, serve it over ice in a tumbler. That's your classic Negroni. I love to garnish mine with rosemary. Um, I think rosemary is a, a great garnish for, for most drinks, mainly because if you have a rosemary plant at home, uh, it's easy. You've always got it there. And you just cut a bit off, smash it between your hands, wonderful. put it into the drink. Absolutely wonderful. But as Neil said, lengthening the, the Negroni so you can put sparkling water in the top uh, to make it a little bit longer or even top it up with even more booze, top it up with some, some sparkling wine. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I'm going to see if there's any more questions because uh, people are they're coming in thick and fast. Oh, good. Lovely. Uh, so, yes, lots of different uh, drinks at different times of day, oh, which is nice. It's delicious. That. Uh, Jackie Negroni is one of your favourite drinks, which is excellent. Uh, fantastic. Good stuff. Um, I think we, we if there's no other questions, actually, that probably yeah. we, we will. Uh, we're coming to the end now. Um, Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, hopefully this has given you some inspiration, or some gin inspiration on World it's Gin Day, of course. Um, the uh, all of these drinks are simple to make. You can have your own twists with these as well. I mean, this is the thing. There is a wonderful democracy about making cocktails. If you don't like something about it, change it. Exactly. Explore, experiment, yeah. and especially when we've got the weather like this, now's the time to bring these from the kitchen into your garden. There was one final question. Jackie says, what time are we on telly tomorrow? Channel 4. 11.55 on Channel 4. We are doing some fun things with Shandy, the exactly. remarkable return of Shandy. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Do stay tuned. Uh, keep reading The Telegraph if you're looking for interesting content uh, sign up as a subscriber because the content for subscribers is always great uh, and we will be here to answer any of your questions uh, ongoing uh, over different food festivals in the future